the telephoto lens, a staple of photography. The concept is simple. You take something that is way over there and you bring it here. Or at least you make it look like it's here. You get it to fill the frame. See details either not possible in real life or too dangerous to get up close and personal with. It's an appealing concept and we have owned and reviewed various telephoto lenses and even an entire camera built around extreme telephoto capability. While the concept is easy to understand, the lenses can be complicated, large and heavy and pricey. There's reasons for that, but there's a time and a place to have a very good telephoto lens that is easy to carry, simple to operate, and not overly pricey. While they say the best camera is the one you have with you, to me that holds true with lenses as well. There are places that I will bring my large, heavy telephoto lenses, and there are adventures where it would be nice to have telephoto capability, but it's just a bit too much to carry. Let me interrupt this video to remind members that I am working on finishing up the next long form course, all about landscape photography. It will be ready very soon. Members not only support this channel, but they see weekly videos. Lately, topics have included product photography and photography in the snow. They get free ebook downloads and they see all of my long form courses. If you are interested, there is a link in the description to learn more about channel membership. But for now, back to the video. There's an entire category of telephoto lenses built around being lighter and more nimble. Enter the Tamron 70 to 300 millimeter F4.5 to 6.3 DI3 RXD for Sony full frame mirrorless. Yeah, that's a mouthful. 70 to 300 millimeter and similar ranges are a staple for lightweight telephoto zooms. On the wide end, it's mild telephoto, great for portraits and walking around. On the long end, you can be photographing birds, bears, or kangaroos from a safe distance. Where I live, that could be birds and bunnies and the things that eat those. <laughs> Your wildlife may be different, but a lot of that wildlife really likes it when you're not up close and personal. <laughs> and that's actually how I like it as well. And while I do love to photograph wildlife. That is a great use for telephoto. I wanted to challenge myself with this lens to do something a little bit different. Because of course we think of wildlife when we think of telephoto, but what else can I do with this range in a lightweight package? So I brought it out on my camera without any other lenses on, for example, a hike where I would normally grab a wide angle lens. But back to this lens. With past lightweight zooms, several of which we have owned, there were compromises. The most notable was softness at the long end. I'm pleased to report that using this lens on the very high pixel count and pixel dense Sony Alpha 7 R4, the sharpness and image quality at 300 millimeters was more than impressive than we even felt like it needed to be. Don't get me wrong, I mean, we'll take all of the sharpness and clarity that we can get, but when a lens is this light and also very versatile, we thought there would certainly be more of an image quality compromise, especially on the notoriously picky Alpha 7 R4. So chalk one up for Tamron in delivering a level of quality that is leading the lightweight zoom class. With the box firmly checked on image quality, we need to dig deeper and get into what distinguishes this telephoto lens from something like this. For one, the Sony goes to 600 millimeters, twice the focal length on the long end, and that is very nice to have. Let's talk more though. If the visual difference isn't obvious, let's add some numbers. The Tamron is a 19 ounce lens. The wonderful but large Sony lens is measured in pounds, 4.66 pounds, and about four times the price. Don't get me wrong, I love that Sony lens, but it is heavy, and when it's in a backpack, it's taking up a lot of the backpack. It's as purposeful a lens as you are when you decide to bring it along. The Tamron, with the lighter weight and still a formidable telephoto focal length, can be just a lot more fun. It's still purposeful, but it's not quite as imposing when it's in your backpack. 
or on your wallet. The price differential can't be ignored. The new Tamron is $550, that Sony is $2,000. I want to be careful here because I'm not saying that these two lenses are functionally identical, but I have had more than a few viewers ask if they really need the 200 to 600 or similar, or if a 70 to 300 or a 100 to 400 will do the job. So what I'm saying is that when telephoto is on your mind, but 300 millimeters will do the job nicely for you, larger telephoto lenses can just be a bit of a burden to bring with you. A lighter telephoto lens like this Tamron can fit nicely into a casual day of shooting, or if you simply don't have the interest or ability to carry around a larger lens. I speak both languages and can appreciate the time and place for each option. Also, with the Tamron widening to 70 millimeters, there's more flexibility on the wide end, which might be preferential to you. It was certainly nice to have during my hiking. There is one more reason why the Tamron is so light. It does not have optical image stabilization. I should mention here that Sony does have a 70 to 300 millimeter lens that does have optical image stabilization. It is also significantly more expensive. And keep in mind that many Sony mirrorless cameras have stabilization built into the body, which works very well on many lenses. Now, the longer the focal length, the less effective in-body image stabilization is. Telephoto lenses benefit from having stabilization in them because the end of the lens is further from the camera body. What this means for this lens is that just like in the good old days before optical stabilization, you will need to keep an eye on those shutter speeds. One divided by the focal length is a good rule of thumb to get started with, but then you'll want to increase from there depending upon your subject. When I was shooting telephoto landscapes on my hikes, that rule was fine. But wildlife, which may move at any time, that might require faster shutter speeds. And really to be clear, optical stabilization wouldn't help with that part anyway. 15 years ago, even 10 years ago, I would have commented that having an aperture of f6.3 on the long end might be limiting. And it still could, depending on your situation, but modern camera bodies can comfortably work at higher ISO settings than ever before. While anything above ISO 1600 used to be more collage than image, <laughs> those days are over. And when I see the auto ISO indicator go to ISO 3200 or even 6400, I know I might get a bit more grain in the image, but not in any objectionable sense. If it were 2005, don't talk to me about ISO 3200, but times have changed for the better. And if my alternative is carrying a much heavier, more expensive, wider aperture telephoto lens, I may not be getting the shot in the first place because I may not be bringing that lens with me. So between a bit of noise and no telephoto at all, I'm on the side of the noise. The bottom line with this lens is that the quality is superb up against any zoom lens that we've used of any size and price range. You're probably more likely to bring it with you. And that's the point here, to get you out and shooting with a lens that brings the action out there up close and personal. And for those purposes, this lens does great. On top of that, Tamron's industrial design of this line of lenses is clean and crisp, and it has weatherproofing. Pull it out of your bag in almost any situation, and don't worry about buttons or settings getting accidentally changed. With some lenses, I do like the flexibility of on-lens controls, and other times, less is more. Sony cameras themselves are more than capable of delivering the settings and flexibility that you need when using lenses like this. I found that while at first I wondered if I would connect with this lens, I wasn't sure about the 70 to 300 millimeter range. I actually really enjoyed it for the telephoto landscapes and nature photography I did while hiking. I know I mention this often, but any time that I can mix things up, it lights a creative fire for me. I've been to Sedona a whole slew of times. I'm lucky to live nearby, but taking away wide angle for a hike or two and I all of a sudden feel like I'm seeing features that I haven't paid attention to before. 
Now it's your turn. Are you more this or this? Or like me, are you both? The big lens for me could be Monday, the little lens could be Tuesday. <laughs> Let me know down in the comments. All questions are fair game. I do my best to address them all for at least the first couple of days after releasing a review, but you all are a very smart community and I love it when you help each other out. Also, on your way to the comments, I have added a link to this lens in the description for you to see pricing and availability in your area. Members also, don't forget to check out the member feature this week. There is a link in the description for that as well. And then also to learn more about channel membership if you are interested. Thank you to Tamron for sending the lens for me to use. And thank you for watching.